I feel like it would be a varsity core, but at the same time, you are up against Undying, and the off lane could be a little annoyed. They might want to go for something else, but all of Krish's heroes are generally melee, so if it's going to be a Marcy 4 for Carlo, you're going to put another melee hero? I don't think that's... I think it's going to be... Yeah, yeah it's going to be the Marcy uh, 3. Chanters 5, and Hoodwink in the 4 role. And, oh god, Enchantress again. I know, like, every time Enigma comes out, I get the feeling that you are annoyed with the hero. But every, and <laughs> just so you know, that is exactly how I feel. Every time every time I'm like, oh, Enchantress again, this hero. Do you not like um, it? You're not a fan of the, you know, the, the, the sprites coming out and just being able to chase heroes down and solo them with impetus and enchant and do so much damage? I mean, we see, we've see we literally seen Enchantresses go no impetus in this tournament. Yeah, literally go true. stats. Yeah. Uh, and the hero just falls off so much later on in the game. So, I don't know. no, no, not a fan. I love the Faceless Void pick by SMG. You're up against two very squishy heroes with the supports. Uh, Batrider, if you can catch him, well, you know, he might lasso you. Cronin's like, lasso suddenly has a lot of imp less impact. Mm -hmm. Marcy, they did fix the fact that Dispose can catch people out of Black Hole and Chrono. Yeah, so did. she no longer... Tears through time and space with just her bare hands, which I thought was a little insane earlier on. So he's like, "Oh, you're in the corner. Let me just witch, you know, to catch you out of there." I remember uh, at one point you could force staff people out, outside of corner. Then Asphalt was like, "That seems a little unfair for Faceless Void." Yeah. So, uh, especially with the ultimate now. Uh, I mean, I, I know it's not for a while, but the Aghanim Scepter doesn't bring the ultimate down to like 60 second cooldown. It oh is, yeah, that was insane. That was such a bring it back, honestly. That was such a good act. No, yes, no, wait, yes. no, too much. No, no, no. <laughs> Let, if he wants to use his ult, his obscenely powerful ultimate, you know, without much cooldown, he should just get a fresh orb like the rest of the peasants. You know, instead of just getting the damn chronosphere twice. Like, no, 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 no. That no, that was the worst. That was insane. He was the best. It was the it worst was a, as a faceless void player at the time. Yeah, it was, it was great. You got the stats all right, all right. as well from the item scepter. You got the yeah, extra health, so you were doing more damage. You were surviving longer. Chronosphere, every team fight. What was no, not no. to like unless you were on the other team? Everything. <laughs> Everything was. All right, you know what? We'll ask chat. Chat, you know who loves you and thinks you're all handsome people. But do you guys think that Faceless Void, Aghanim Scepter, 60 second cooldown is balanced? Chat, don't and, listen uh, to his pandering. Don't listen. I would never pander. I speak. See, this is why. So you only praise chat when you're pandering. I speak from the heart. I guess. Uh, I guess it's just different for you. Um, check out the thing though. SMG's got four melee heroes, and mm. huh? Tim look at TNC. So? Yeah, I'm thinking something like that. You but know, but you'd have to run like the Marcy as a position one, maybe. Mm. Or do you, would you uh, just put Timbersaw one? Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, yeah let's throw the Timbersaw out the window. They're not going to pick the Timbersaw. I think I don't know if they. Yeah, that's the one I'm feeling. I'm not sure you're gonna take the timber sub, but you do need something like timber sub. I kind of like the idea of an underlord. When we saw that, I was like, oh, underlord would be pretty good. Uh, and re a reminder, it could still be about either off lane, in which case they might take a kunkka mid. I like the idea of a kunkka mid. Good yeah. against the ember spirit. Good against the faceless void. You both when people are caught by the crone. So there is something nice with that. Uh, with the um, with the sorry with the uh, kunkka. Yeah. Overall though, TNC's draft. <laughs> They need something like that. Like they do ban out. I like the ban by SMG getting rid of that Naga Siren. Another just good counter to the Faceless Void Sleep. And they're feeling like they need a carry. They feel like it's Marcy off, Batrider mid. They feel like TNC needs a carry. This TNC's pick. They don't have much time. Ten seconds. I'm trying to think of a hero that I would actually work for them. Spectre to find Urshik would be. What do they go with? They go with. Oh. I don't like that. No, I don't either. I'm very surprised they went for the Drow Ranger. I mean, I you are up against, like we said, you're up against four melee. You do have that nice range that you can hit for. They go with Miran. Okay, that's that's kind of interesting. SMG, not a big fan, but solid choice. You know, whatever. It can work. It's gonna be. Oh, by the way, mid one Mira off lane Mirana. I was gonna think maybe they're gonna be off lane Undying. So Pelosan is like off lane Urshik, and then go no, mid one Mirana. Oh god, doesn't matter. I don't I mean, think it actually matters. I think that SMG just has the draft straight up. Yeah, I, I think we saw... was It It was DP playing that Mirana that we saw yesterday. It did look good, just not yes. carry good. But in a core mm -hmm. role, you know, playing it in that offlane, it might not be too bad here. But yeah, going back to the draw, again, TNC, who sits on the front line here? Because... No uh, one. 
Bok wants to be in and around, but he wants to be bouncing around with the rebounds, getting disposed, you know, getting in and around the fight. Um, Critch on the back rider, he's going to be able to grab someone and drag them away. Hudwin can Enchantress don't be, want to be frontliners, and Drow can't. Because then, you, yeah, you, you lose your you, the, the passive ship, on the yeah. ultimate. Yeah. And yeah. You've got Earthshaker wants to go for a blink dagger. You've got Ember Spirit that can dive forward with remnants. Faceless Void with the time walk forwards. Morana with leaps. It's only Undying that doesn't get in the Drow Ranger's face. This is... I, I really don't like... And I'm one of those people that when... I say one of those people, it's just me. You know, that there's a, a carry coming out. I'm just like, what about the Drow Ranger? You know, Drow Ranger yeah. looks good. How about the Drow? Even in like the, the worst picks. But yeah, here, I just really don't like it. Nah, same here. It's You've got... Four rage and a Marcy who can't tank, and I, I don't like it either. I'm fully on board with you. I think, I think for once we are in agreement that we both believe SMG has the better draft. Yeah. Um, one thing that you can sort of say is that maybe it's going to be a little bit hard for the faces void to get Chrono because they're all rage, so they might all be splitting up in different directions. But he doesn't really need to get amazing Chrono. He just needs to catch a couple, and that's generally good enough. And a TNC late game, they're not going to be tanking. You're up against, you know. Their catch is not amazing either. Just, just, I just look at the draft. I feel like it's full of holes. You know, I just feel like it's full of holes. It doesn't address what uh, Team SMG has. Uh, good luck to TNC. You know, just, just good luck to them. Check out that win rate. Holy crap! Five thousand to three thousand six hundred. What is that? That is insane. Pelos and God, man. I think we saw that yesterday as well. Um, I mean, and every time it's impressive. I mean, he's ranked 91 in the region, so... No, that's, that's yeah, good. it's not surprising that he has a, a good win rate on any hero. But, yeah. um... Yeah, no, no, no that's, not the, that's not the win rate on his hero, that's the win rate in general. Like, uh, oh, is it? Okay. okay. Yeah, it's like 5,300 to 3,600. Wait, you think he played 8,000? Like, undying To be honest, I, I was busy swapping over the scene, so I didn't actually see what uh, the win okay. rate was, you know? <laughs> so, no, yeah, he's got, I was he's just agreeing with you. That could have been like, it could have been like one win and, you know, 100 losses. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, what a win rate. Yeah, that's so what good. Win, so good. <laughs> By the way, he starts out with eight mangoes. He's like, let me let me get eight mangoes. And, and he doesn't, he doesn't, I think they leave two sentry wards. Yeah, they don't buy... Pelosan leaves two sentry wards in the base, unless he's going to sell a couple of these mangoes. But we are seeing a lot of this, uh, you know... Six, three, like sometimes we see six mangoes and a tango, something. Now we're, now we're looking, no, 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 eight mangoes is the is the way to go. It's, I, I suppose, with the, the changes here to Decay, so the mana cost increase, yeah, just, just what else are you going to do in lane? You're not going to walk up and hit anyone, just sit and use the Decays. Mm, let's see. If he's if he's gonna play with CDR, you might get a couple of slows off. That would be pretty good. Mm. Uh, yeah. This, by the way, this is gonna be the Krish Bat Rider. I mean, we know that, but just to confirm, Bok on as well on the Marcy. So lanes going pretty standard for for uh, TNC. The mid one Mirana. I am just. I feel like SMG thought, you know what, guys? There's literally no way we can lose. Let's just pick some <laughs> red. Uh, mid one, are you going for the all hero shots? He's like, why? Yes, I am. Just how how did you it, know? Yeah. I'm going. I'm going for the Kuroki record. He's like, right, yeah. what's next, Mirana? Okay. It's not too bad, honestly. You do need someone who can actually do damage outside the Chrono, mm. because you look at the rest. They, you know, zombies. You can spawn them, but that's about it. Maybe you can slide a fish, but nothing insane. No Mystic Flare, no Ice Blast, no Supernova. So you need something they can do damage outside of the Chrono. They said, hey, let's just go with Mirana. You just can right click, couple of Wraith Bands, Dragon Lance. That's just insane amounts of damage, anyway. Yeah. And it's, I mean, they have a lot of control outside the Chronosphere as well. So the Chronosphere isn't the win condition for the fights. Mm. You know, it is just going to be that cherry on top that maybe you don't use it straight away. You know, maybe you get a good engage and you can wait for TNC to start grouping up. Um, or, you know, use it as a, as a catch if anyone's trying to run themselves away. I'm not saying you won't use it as the engage, you know, absolutely can. But it's one of those that you've got. The Earthshaker coming in with the Fissure probably goes for that shard, so he's going to have the control through the Enchant Totem Fissure. Your Moon with the Searing Chains and the, the Slight Fist Lockdown mid one with the arrows as well. Um, it, the, there's a lot of control, and like you say, just be able to use that in combination with the Undyne's Tombstone. You, you're building up those zombies, even when the Chronosphere mm. comes out, you build up those zombies. That's going to be a massive thing to unleash when the, the Chronosphere does finally wear off. Another thing that's also kind of bugs me is that they don't really have good uh, tombstone hitters on uh, yeah. on TNC. I mean, Drow's okay. And I guess one thing we kind of mentioned is that you do get the, give that marksmanship buff to your allies, I think. 
So that's kind of decent. Uh, I don't know. It's it's that's not much really. Uh, wait, did, I don't think she actually has that. Let me check again. I think that's been removed a, a while ago. So yeah, it's like. I mean, if they went for a Luna, you could have at least powered up your allies. Let's just, just mm. do anything. My God. And the smoke from TNT does wear off now as well. I don't know if they were looking for a quick first blood. Because, I mean, those enchant hasn't been picked up. You know, bushwhack. None, none of the stuns have been picked up. It just looks like it was going to be um, a rotation around. Only the ice uh, arrows picked it up here for Asta, uh, as far as I can see. Oh, it's sticking napalm there as well. All right, so if you are TNC, you have absolutely got to snowball. Like, it yeah. is, it is you have to snowball. You don't actually have good tower damage. It's, I mean, Trow's, you know, 5 out of 10 tower damage. But the other four are just a joke, basically, when it comes to hitting buildings. So you really, but you really have to, you have to find some way to snowball. Mm -hmm. to, so the SFG doesn't, like, doesn't go late game. You go late game, there's just no chance. There's just no chance for TNC to take it. We say that, by the way, but who knows, right? We've seen we've seen crazy drafts work before. TNC, they do start off with three bounty runes, so it's pretty nice for them. Yeah, that's an all right start for them. Um, whether they can translate that into something in this fight, you know, whether they're going to be able to move through for an early advantage, I don't actually know if it's going to be that impactful. Though. It's a little bit of extra goal, yeah, okay, it's going to be nice. But yeah, if they're going to be kind of manhandled in these lanes, Mm. You, you know, it's going to put them on the back foot anyway. This is a really nice ward here now as well. The Observe ward coming through from Team SMG on the bottom lane. Mavis mm. is going to be seen when he tries to go for any pulls, any rotations. Mavis is going to be taking a lot of damage anyway. He's not skilled anything up just yet. Yeah. Could be forced into those nations of tenants with Afu putting so much pressure on him. Oh, mid one. He he, he took uh, air level one, gets the range creep, but takes a bit of harass. And now, yeah, just reading back to Marcus. So it does give you bonus agility to your allies, mm. which is nice when you have so many ranged uh, people helping you out. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, look couriers. At uh, yeah, I'm just watching the couriers fall, but look at this top lane there as well. Box sitting on 200 health because the, the constant decay stack. CDR hasn't skilled anything 16. up just yet. And I wouldn't be surprised level two. You know, he gets that time walk up. The bashes start to come out now as well. If they just jump on Bok and maybe potentially look for this first blood. Man, oh man. He, he, he walks up, he, he rebounds the bot. Ooh, uh, sorry, the and it can't kill, it doesn't do damage anyway. And mid one gets a kill on Ast in the bomb lane. Afu with a stun, followed by an arrow. And it's like, yep, that's going to be a combo we're going to be seeing. There's really nothing TNC can do. This draft is... Ah, it's so weird. Mid, mid lane, though, could be something, though. Krish versus Moon. We've seen Moon lose mid lane against the Batrider when he's playing Ember Spirit. It is a good matchup for the Batrider in general. So this could be the saving grace for, uh, for TNC. Yeah. Um... We'll, yeah, we'll see how that goes because Moon, he, he, I mean, Moon's got a little bit of experience from the, the last series on this, so he might know how to deal. I'm not Afu. saying, but Afu, yeah, Enchant Totem and Fisher Bar both, uh, they're going to be able to set up with well, the arrows to connect as well. The Enchant Totem to come out, he doesn't actually have the mana for it now as well. So there is going to be the leap forward, Mavis with the Nature's Attendance. Is he going to be enough to save him? One more right click, mid one gets himself another kill. 2 0 so far in the lane, two minutes in, having a really good time here on this uh, off lane Morana. Mm. I mean, I mean, top lane, I, okay, I, they're going to be able to get the kill onto Paulson. There was the drag back by Bark to dispose underneath the tier 1 tower. And Mavis gets a return kill onto Afu here, the bottom lane. Really good, though. I, again, Bark going to be able to get that drag back just underneath. And the aggro was on the Undying from the tower. So, good setup for the kill. And Krish is starting to pull ahead in the mid lane as well on the bat rider. 17 0 to the 12 and 1 for the Ember Spirit. So, pretty solid. And there is a good amount of damage from this Marcy Hoodwink. Like, there's a good amount of control, good amount of damage. As long as Paulson doesn't have too many decay stacks, you should be okay. Carlo, he's hitting CDR a lot in the face. He's just going out with that crossbow, just making sure he takes as much damage as possible. But, you know, it's faceless void. He's got a tango. He's going to be generally okay with it. Box, still low health, by the way. Still no region on him. Yeah, and Undyne has four more mangoes to go and even has like a four because obviously the reset comes in for the death. Look at this as well. The tier two tower going to be able to take down... Critch, he was just diving Moon, got all the way oh. back to the tier 2. Oh. oh, that's unfortunate, and oh no, that you can't, I mean, it's not too bad, you know, it's like you're still, but Moon's gonna hit level 6 much earlier now, he's gonna just gonna be able to remnant himself to safety if he needs to, 
Very unfortunate for Krish. A little too aggressive. Throwing away the lead that he had Bottom on was the arrow. Oh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just watching. Oh, he already used it. Okay. So, mid one not able to get the arrow off. Not able to get the kill onto Mavis there. But yeah, like you said, the, the mid lane, the level 6 moon. And what's he? Nearly level 5. Fire Rider. I mean, he's going to catch up off this creep wave if, if uh, yeah. moon doesn't get close to the XP. Top lane. They're going to be able to try and make a dive. Paulson, can he do anything with this now as well? Going to be the double bushwhack. So they get the kill onto Paulson, but the chase is on CDR. Hits that bash. Does he want to go for even more? He's going to have that time walk to get himself in if he wants to, but doesn't want to commit underneath the tier 1 tower. Still very risky. Bottom well, lane. bottom lane. Oh, multi shot comes Aster. through. Mid one has to go for the leap away. Afu with the enchant totem. Does he want to maybe try and turn this one around here? But the ice arrow is coming through onto Afu. And Afu, one more right click. He uses that. Was that the very far in the stick? Enough to keep him alive there. But Mavis does get the follow up kill. Two points into the enchant there for the enchantress. Nothing into the impetus just yet. It's got, the lane stage is going pretty solidly for TNC here. Yeah. Despite the fact that SMG, they're the ones with the undying in the lane. They're the ones that are going for this. Mirana, Earthshaker combo, there's a lot of stuns. So overall, TNC looking pretty happy. Although that uh, that mid kill by Krish still not exactly what you want to see, but he is catching up. Uh, one nice thing about mid one on the Mirana, by the way, is anytime Enchantress brings a creep, he just arrows the creep. And he's like, oh, yeah. thank you, free gold. Like, <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. It's one of the nice. It's one of the nice things about the Mirana versus Enchantress matchup. You usually see it as a support matchup, but this time it's like, oh well, it doesn't matter. I can just kill him anyway. So we'll see what they can Boss do here. Ends. Yeah. Um, Aster as well. How's he looking in terms of last hits? 22 last hits. So his farm hasn't been massively interrupted. Um, he's even got an assist in there as well. Wanted to kill the eye. Shouldn't the silence come through onto mid one now as well? Mid one. Mavis gets another kill. And mid one just hanging around solo HP. Couldn't get the leap off because of the silence. And maybe a little bit of a goofy movie there coming through from mid one. Yeah, By the way, one thing that is strange is that Moon did not go for for a bottle till now. He's just, I think he's sending it out. He went for boots first, managed to match, want to max out the magic stick as well, upgrade to the magic wand. So that yeah. delayed bottle means that when Afu teleports mid to help him, he's like, oh, I don't even have ball to refill. Hmm. It is a bit awkward for him because he against the bat rider. Did go for this build in the last game as well, prioritizing the magic wand. The flame break comes oh, out. Moon. Is it gonna be it's only level five onto the bat rider now as well? So he is gonna be able to get the remnant away here, Moon. Meanwhile, you know, Bach almost losing his life. There's a zombie coming after him. There's a Pelosan punching him in the face, and Box like he is gonna lose his life in the end. Oh, mid one. Gets a kill, but there is going to be three heroes stacking up onto Carlo. Carlo can get himself away, and Chant Totem comes out. The fish of the right click, Carlo. Trying to do what he can with the furry fires, the magic stick to heal up. Paulson's going to get pretty darn low, but Carlo doesn't have any spells. The tower shots, Afu. Oh, it's going to be his courier being targeted. Will it go down? Mavis might be able to get it. He will be able to. Afu stops. He was trying to micro that now as well, but Paulson might be the follow-up. It's going to be his courier that goes down there as well, and that's going to be his boots for the next minute or so. He's going to be a slow zombie. He's going to be a, way, an OG zombie, like a, a Dawn of the Dead zombie. <laughs> By the way, the mid one was able to kill Asta two versus one. Like, that is still a big deal. Like, that's why they they were able to, like, rotate people top after that. So, uh, still looking okay. What's this Mirana going for? She is going to go for the... Sorry, she already has the Power Threads. Wraith Band going to go for the Falcon Blade after. the. We've seen this a lot, like, on, on Core Mirana. Just give the, a lot of these early game stat items that yeah. are very helpful for you. Krish. Lowest in terms of CS though. Does have the last one mid as well here, Krish. There's going to be a little rotation through from the Enchantress as well as Carlo. But it looks like they're not going to be able to close this gap. Slight. Like, if this does come through, doing a little bit of damage here to Mavis. Moon. Does he want to try? I mean, he's going to know that there's three heroes here. Yeah, he's going to see those three heroes. So he's not going to overextend. Doesn't want to get too far forward. But does have the backup from the rest of his team as well. Afu just waiting for anybody to show to get that Fisher off. But there will be. Uh, Mavis going to be seen underneath the wards here, moving himself away. Uh, I like a bit of uh, level disadvantage coming out for SMG. Three on both of their supports, whereas there's five on the Chanters and four on the Hoodwing. So that could uh, be a problem for the mid one. Walks in, sees Mavis. He's going to try and arrow the creep. And uh, misses the, the arrow, unfortunately. 
<laughs> Been late another good bit to make a move, move on to Krish. Was that Fisher? He's going to try and block him off. He does get it on the right side now as well. And the Firefly, it's already been used, so Krish going to be in trouble. Can he get himself away from this uh, one? Ooh. Krish, Moon, where's he going to be able to go? Searing Chains, it doesn't actually connect him. Goes onto the creep, puts that slight fist. He's already used that now as well. The Lasso gets the kill onto Afu. Afu just stuck around a little bit too long, and thanks to that Searing Chains connecting to the creeps and not the Bat Rider, he does get a kill before he goes down. And now Mavis as well, he's got the soul onto the Paulson. Paulson going to get himself away from this. It looks like Mavis. Mavis, with only level 1 into the impetus, not going to be able to do so much damage here. And Moon, does he actually want to try and dive to the remnant? No, he doesn't. Uh, maybe try and catch Mavis up, but Mavis will be able to walk himself away faster. Paulson, did he get his boots? The enchant comes out onto Paulson once again. Was that just the... I think it was actually just a seed shot, and not the full enchant for the slow. Yeah, it, it, for uh, for losing Afu for that, for that bat rider is fine for them, because SMG, this is what they're worried about. They're worried about Krish, they're worried about Bok, that's all they care about, Mavis. Yeah, you in no man's land, it might be. Point blank arrow into the leap, into the star storm. They do get to kill me. What a lane. CDR gets taken down. Carlo and Bok combine them for those. The unleash to unleash the damage from Bok, and they do get that kill onto the faceless void. He is all six. He did have the chronosphere, but I guess he was just locked down by the bushwhack. Um, yeah, to be fair, the, the, he's the only rebound. got he's only got 900 health. He's literally got one. Like, what's that? True. Is there like what four extra stats? A power trace are on edge, so he just, just doesn't have health. And uh, there are a lot of stuns. We've said we've said before, like there's a lot of control coming out from the hoodwink as well as the Marcy, and a good amount of damage as well. Yeah, and another rotation coming through from Afu. Paulson's going to be close now as well. Walks right into Mavis. The Enchant Totem. Mavis only level five native attendance, so he does get those off. Hmm. Let's see, what, what are we looking at? Earthshaker, nothing crazy on him. Pelosan, he's going for the max decay build, by the way, which is, I think, the better way to play uh, the ba the Undying now. Yeah. He's gonna be bothered here by... Well, he's bothering Mavis as well as the uh, Bat Rider. Bat Rider is just trying to get some farm up here. What is Bat Rider trying to go for? Very close to the, both, either the Blink Dagger or the... Uh, Look at this top lane. The gush, gush comes out, connects onto the Faceless Void. The rebound as well oh. for the slow, the multi-shot. He is going to be able to get the time walk off. Um, not enough lockdown. Carlo was moving himself up, wasn't there in time. But now they know where Asta is. They might try and make a jump here. Rich, Remnant yeah. goes down. Paulson. Oh, he just TP's back here, move. Okay. Well, they're gonna they're gonna go for the top. Okay, they're gonna get they get the top for TMC. It's unfortunate they can't get CDI, but they're gonna be okay with it. In the meantime, though, mid one pushing bottom kind of by himself. So he just, they're investing less resources on SMG to control the map. They do have three people mid. They really want this mid. They've been there for a while. And uh, by the way, check out what Ast is going, going for the hand minus, realizing it's going to be a long game. Afu? Yeah, the Mavis, there is going to be the TP in though, Chris. Do you want to try and get on top of someone? The sharpshoot is going to be channeled here from Carlo. Where do you go? The lasso is going to be locking down onto Moon. Bog oh. gets the damage. Going to be able to go with the double kill. And now Paulson going to be chased down. Are they going to have enough damage to take him down? They absolutely are. It's just going to be a matter of time before the zombie is slain. No Mirana, no Faceless Void, SMG, they've been in the mid lane for a long time, TNC was like, you know what, let's just go, let's all of them just go there, and they just bring the numbers, 4 versus 3, and uh, I believe 4 is more than 3, so, easier yeah. for them to take a fight. Hey, I went to a good school, man, they taught me the maths. I went to a school, uh -huh. I think. They, they told us it was a school. <laughs> There were people there, they sometimes taught us something intentionally, most of the time <laughs> unintentionally, you know. Um, but you know, we, we did say at the beginning that TNC did need to snowball with this draft. Um, yes. They, they are looking, I mean, the net worth goes slightly in favor of Team SMG, but they are firing the kills here. They've got the faces, what was that, the second? Uh, no, first, yeah, but push him away from the lane. So the second gank attempt, you know, in CDR. It just slowed him down a little bit. Mavis might not be so lucky here, though. He walks up into two heroes. Time dilation going to be used. Even the flesh going for this now as well. Skeletons, but the time walk comes forward now as well. CDR. Slot of fist comes out, and Moon does get the kill. I mean, for all this aggression that TNC's got, they've only got one tower and no net worth advantage. Mm -hmm. So it's not much to talk about. SMG, they still want to go for this mid tower. They've been, they've been harping on mid for a while, and... Unfortunately, when you when you go with the max decay build, which I like, like I prefer on dying, your tombstone stays at level one. <laughs> you know, so when you go in for these tower pushes, it's not as good as you, the max tomb. Oh, oh, he gets the jump out. Sharpshooter will be channeled there as well. I don't think. Okay, not gonna be able to headshot the zombie. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna be a tier one tower in the mid lane. So they do put some pressure on here. And but yeah, like you said, the faceless void going for that hand of Midas Caesar. It. it might be a bit of a later game coming through here. Asta. 
Gonna go for the for the dragon lance. So CDR, he doesn't want to be involved straight away. You know, he does want to be getting out yeah. the extra farm from that. What do you reckon next, Maelstrom? I mean, we have Maelstrom on mid one, so I don't see why he wouldn't want to go for it. So it's always just good. And you might need a tax. He might, yeah. He, or he, I was gonna say he might be go for mask. Mask. No, he goes for the Maelstrom. Just want to, wants to get more farm. As CDR is playing the greedy game. And I can't blame him, you know, he's looking at his team, he's like, you guys, you guys just hold. I don't really care, you guys just hold for me no matter what. Yeah. And, and uh, I think, I mean, I think they can. You know, mid one hasn't been very involved so far. I think he hasn't been involved, he's got half the kills in this game. He's literally 4-2. <laughs> but uh, he hasn't been involved in the big team fights. You know, well, a lot of the kills got off onto the Amos right now as well. They're going to be able to go with the sharpshooter, the Unleashed. Do they have the damage though? Rebound, oh. he got locked down by the Searing Chains. Couldn't get the rebound off and the Amos was able to get himself away. Piggy Paul coming from Afu. Afu going to get himself away from this though. Mid one coming in from the sidelines. He might still get the kill onto Afu. Yeah, mid one just decides, you know what mate? You are on your own. Yeah, another big loss. I mean, he's only level 5 on the Earthshaker, so he still doesn't have his Echo Slam, which is a little late, actually. It's almost 40 minutes, still level 5 on the Earthshaker. Looks like Peloso must have taken the Tome. He's level 7. That always seems to work <laughs> out. The guy against the Tome is 8. The other guy's like, well, I thought you were having a bad game. Bok? We're right? having a bit of a bad game here. Bok will be locked down. Searing oh, Chains. Wow, Arrow, actually, he landed on a creep, I'm pretty sure. Yes, it is. Uh, so uh, saving Private Ryan right there, but it doesn't really matter. In the end, they still get the kill. It's a big kill, you know. Bach as well as Krish have to have a good game. And Bach, I mean, he's not bad. He's five and two. He's going to go for that BKB, but it's, I don't think that's enough, honestly. Yeah, um, I assume similar builds. The last game, you go for the BKB into the Basha, yeah. pick it up yep. that way. Yeah. In the meantime, though, uh, Batrider Krish, he's got. The booster tower, and they are playing on the enemy side for TNC. They're like, we want to make sure we suffocate this uh, voice spirit as much as we can. And kind of working. He's always third net worth, but he's still he's still farming up a storm. He's still very fine with that. Asta barely ahead of him. Mid mid one is giga farm, dude. He has just had a free game till now. Yeah, Maelstrom not too far off the BKB there as well. And Bar it's going to be about 2,000 gold away, just a little bit over, about 2,300. But the pace that he's setting at 15 minutes, we've already got the Falcons playing in the Maelstrom. Yeah, he's having a really good time with this. Meanwhile, bottom jungle. Bok does get locked down here by the Searing Chains. Paulson moving over. Uh, really nice ward, really good deep ward here. With SMG wanted to roam, wanted to get the gank. And it looks like they might be able to get something out of this. CDI is just waiting. Slight Fist comes in. Searing Chains. Chronosphere going to be committed onto this now as well. And it looks like they might be able to get the kill onto the Marty once again. If they want to try and drop the tombstone. But he's going to try and turn it around with the Unleash. And he's surviving through this. The sidekick. It keeps him alive. It keeps him going. Mavis gets the reveal here with the dust. But Critch lasso onto the Undying. Do they have enough to get the shot? And it looks like the sharpshooter, yeah, Carlo this time. Headshots onto the zombie. Critch could be locked down long enough to get this kill. Carlo could be in trouble. He's already used that scurry charge. And where can they go with this time walk forward for the faces forward if they want to use it? Do they get the bash off though? He is going to go for the time walk. The first Oof. hit bash. Time dilation comes out now as well. And Carlo, he gets that bushwhack off. But CDR was that time walk. He gets his kill with a slight fist. And now mid one for the back behind the enemy lines. Jumping in. Arrow will miss, but he still gets the kill though. With those Maelstrom procs and the Star Storm damage. I love how Afu arrives as the fight ends. He was actually <laughs> top farming the whole time to get level six. He like took him like until 50 minutes and a half to get level six. And he's got the I think the shard coming out for him as well. But he shows up. He's like, hey guys, what's going on? The core is literally doing all the work here for SMG. But yeah. why not? I mean, they can. Like this is this is an easy game for them. They can just do what they want. It's very hard for TNC to play against these cores. Oh, the tumblers toy. Really nice ward here for for the rating. It does see the. Um, excuse me, the Earth Spirit, uh, excuse me, the Earth Shaker up the Earth cliff. Shaker, yeah. yeah. Um, and the Fisher down, so Batrider able to get the Tumblr's toy as that uh, Fisher was being prepped there by the Shaker. Mid lane, Krish. But they're going to be able to dodge off that Fisher. Now the Enchant throws him into the arrow. The Star Storm comes out as well. Batrider, Echo Slam committed, and maybe he's going to be taking a lot of damage. The leap once again comes through from mid one, and Afro gets himself a double. Really nice there, getting that gold that's going to get him closer towards that Blink Dagger. Dude, Alpha and Mid1 have had such a good combat, like communication. Game 2 that we saw versus Boom with the uh, Marcy as well as the Rubik, that went really well for them. This game as well, they've landed a lot of these Fissure Arrow combos where they're like, yeah, just like perfect chain stun just now on Krish. So very impressive teamwork between those two. All right, the science comes out. They're going to be able to get the Ember. rebound in, but the Fissure, it stops the full combo coming out from Bok. They do still get the kill. So Moon is going to be taken down. Are they going to be able to get anything else out of this now as well? Carlo, he has that shot, so he has the Boomerang. Under attack. The CDR no Chrono for about 30 seconds, so he does, he still he doesn't want to get engaged in this anymore. He doesn't want to fight with these guys. 
Wants to wait for his crone to be up mid one. Are you gonna be okay? Oh, Sunlands. Get... No, the Fisher. Does he have a leap? Two seconds. But the Dispose comes out. Mid one's gonna be locked down. The Moonlight Shadow. He does get the leap down to the low ground. But the Gust comes in. They blow him back into a kill. Oh, the, the rebound, the jump, just barely in range to catch the stun. And mid one loses his life in that situation. Very close to the BKB. So overall, as yeah, they got a kill on Krish, but then they lose both two of their cores. CDR stays alive, and that's kind of the most important thing, but a little bit unfortunate for uh, for SMG here. Oh, Moon? Maybe for Mavis, he's got the heal on, though. Yeah, Nate, it doesn't really matter. The amount of magic damage, the burst damage that comes out, Moon just easily claims that kill. Plus, you get the, what is it, 25% spell damage amp as well, coming out from the uh, from the Undying, which is yeah, that's a big amount of damage as well. Bob Lane, Bach, what's he doing? He's uh, he's just handing out in the trees. He's gonna TP out. They actually they ping him. He's like, like, we think he's there. The star even used a scan. They were so confident Bach was there. They were right, but just a little bit too slow to actually get there in time. Yeah, and again, Ember Spirit giving the game away. This observer, what does he see moving around? Carlo, he's on the oh, hunt. He's not scurry. Do they have the bushwhack? They do. They have the gust into the bushwhack. And oh. says Boomerang comes out and asks to get that kill. So Moon, I mean, he's five, three, and four here. I need to expect the Ember Spirit. Maybe a couple more kills, maybe a couple more deaths, but just the lockdown coming out from TNC, enough to get those kills. It's a surprise. It's surprising. We didn't think that the lockdown was that amazing, but uh, these these bushwhacks have been doing an insane job by Carlo, and he's just in general he's been having a fantastic game, highest net worth among the supports. It does have the Aetherlands coming out for him? I think he's just going to go buy the the item now, which means that. And Bursper, we won't be even seeing these uh, bushwhacks come out. Smoke oh. on smoke action. There's a chronosphere though. Oh, yeah, smoke's gonna break. Fisher, really nice Fisher. Where's the time walk? He's gonna go. He's gonna do the enchant totem. But the Fisher, he has to that time walk over the Fisher. That did block him off. And now Bok gonna be able to pop that BKB. They're still gonna be able to get the kill onto the bat right now as well. But CDR gonna get himself away from this. There's still gonna be right clicks coming out from Mavis. The rebound now as well onto the Faceless Void. Faceless disposed back. He has that time walk in a second. Gets himself over the Fisher. The Echo Sun's gonna be committed now as well. So Masty will be taken down. And Mavis might be the next one to fall. Afu will be a consolation prize but he might and even be able Asta. to get himself so Asta, the three man ghost though he's gonna be able to get the lockdown with the bushwhack onto two heroes that's gonna be kill on tdr and now moon well mid one has to pop that bkb can he get close to Asta? he's trying to do what he can the damage of the star storm and Asta, carlo gets himself a double kill but Asta inside oh, the roche pit mid one claims that kill does he get bashed by roshan he gets himself oh. out i mean honestly that fight went so First, we get a three-man uh, crow sphere, but he has to walk through the like over the fissure to get there. It's not that bad because it's maximum movement speed. But then Bach turns out the BKB almost kills CDR, but they were able to get killed. Then the three-man silence into a kill on Moon as well as CDR. And mid one is like, no, 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 I don't know. I'm not losing this game. Gamage to kill Asta. <laughs> oh my lord, what a fight! A little bit of an advantage for SMG because they killed all the cores and the support, whereas mid one still lived for their team. Oh, yeah, mid one. Crazy. Oh. He's just playing. He's playing the carry role from the off lane here. It looks like. Um, I think that he's got two good options for uh, neutral. He's got the groove bow as well as the new one. What's it called? The uh, the something something tool. <laughs> the specialist array. Yeah. Yeah, because you get the two extra shots, which would be pretty good for him. The something something tool, yeah. That's, the, the, that's, the that's something it. something, that's what it is. Yeah, the fish of the enchant got, totem. Critch has to use that BKB, he does have the lasso, but he's not able to get in range. He's going to have to settle for the Earth Shaker now as well, but the Moonlight Shadow is going to use. Arrow up. flies through, doesn't connect onto anyone. There's going to be a really nice flame break onto Afu now as well. He does take the shot from the sharpshooter, trying to turn around Oof. onto Fisher. Hunter's bow comes out now as well, so they're going to be able to settle for that kill onto the Earth Shaker. Can they go even further onto Paulus? And Paulus no, will be revealed. Yeah, the face of Void not interested in this fight at all, but Moon, he he says, we, we can turn, we can go now, we can do a little bit of damage. But the full staff, it gets Marcy out of the range of the arrow. Hurricane Pike, actually. It's the draw Hurricane Pipe. She just pushes him uh, pushes him away. So, really good heads of play here. And yeah, TNT, in these fights, like you say, the, that communication to, to push him away, the arrow would have probably done a lot of damage to them, maybe put him in mm. kill range. And yeah, like you say, Asti using that Hurricane Pike. And then, but this is the thing, right, that TNC... For these fights, the group of numbers five, they're rotating, they're looking for those picks. Pixels Void, still not getting involved in these fights just yet. But to be honest, I'm feeling like TNC, like if they were, both teams are playing the same way, I feel like SMG would have won. I feel like TNC is outplaying them. Oh, Moon, okay, Slide dodges the bush this time. Sharpshooter, it hits onto the Marana. Can they go for this? I mean, Moon, he has to move himself back. He's so far away. Is where Faceless Void Chronosphere there is. 
if you want to try and go for this lockdown onto Mavis. Put the bushwhack onto mid one. This might be really good. Oh. Uh, did you want to pop the chronosphere? He's oh. going to be able to catch only Mavis. Uh, sorry, the Marcy in this now as well. And it's still going to be a kill for here. Critch does go down, dispose. Uh, Moon does he have a remnant to jump to. He's going to be silenced. Echo slam on the back lines. It's going to be enough to save Moon now as well. Enchant totem. They get the kill onto the drow range. And they can go for even more. Time walk up in one second. Carlo through the trees with the scurry. But he's just going to scurry right into Afu's path. Enchant totem's going to be off the mark. Fisher on school down for the next couple of seconds. Back lines. Bok. Can they get on top of him? He's going to try and go with the rebound off his creep, but the Fisher comes through the enchant toes him. He's going to be locked down. He's going to be killed off. Did Ab Apo had a terrible early game, but he just made it up for it with that huge echo slam. Coming in from a very different angle. They were not expecting him to come from behind. I think he catches uh, Asta as well as Mavis. And just massive echo slam right there. Because the chronosphere, let's be honest, was not the best. It just caught the mark, and that was basically <laughs> on the edge. But... Huge heads up play by Afu. And this is kind of the problem that TS is going to have to deal with. SMG's draft has a lot of tools to work with, you know? You can dodge the Chrono. Can you dodge the Echo Slam? Can you deal with the Tombstone? You know, can you catch the Embers? He's got yeah. a lot to deal with. Whereas TNC, that's just not as tough to deal with their draft, that's for sure. Yeah, for as good as TNC looked in the early game, it's still a 4K net worth lead here to SMG. <laughs> uh, and like you say, that was when... The faces void wasn't really getting involved. He did get involved in that last fight, but it wasn't a full five man team fight now. They're going to be able to get the leap Astra. onto the, well, the Hurricane pack as well. But the leap comes forward. They're going to be able to get the kill onto Astro. He goes down straight away. The last over. The BKB is up for the Marana. Marana made one. What can he do with this? Mavis trying to get himself away from this one with the Nature's Attendance coming through. They still have the damage to burst through the Bambi. And uh, Asta, like, dude, mid one is hitting like a truck. He's also got the Brigand's Blade, which gets stronger and stronger. The wall he hits with it, he's going for the Yash, so that's a ton of attack speed as well. It's just, and of course with the leap attack speed down. So he just yeah. hits so hard and so fast. Roshan is up. They want to go for the SMG. No Chrono, no Echo Slam. I don't even think they have a Tombstone, so this is a bit bold. Uh, TNC could, uh, do they have time actually? No, there's the damage amp from the Flesh Golem. An underrated part of the uh, of Undy, you know, amplifying the damage people take by thirty percent is no joke. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it does mean that this is going to be. <laughs> I think CDL got bashed by the Roche just before it went down, but he's still able to pick up that Aegis uncontested. And yeah, TNC just couldn't get themselves out. They, I mean, they they would have had a, a fight on the hands to get around. Aster was still dead um, as they pushed into that, so it wasn't really for TNC to try and contest. Another issue is going to come up for TNC very soon. There's a Wraith Pact on the Undying. You thought Tombstone was annoying? Now we got the, we got something that moves and also does damage. And according to someone here, used to slow enemies as Shut well. Up. <laughs> well, but yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be another ob objective that TNC has to do with. The good thing is, though, there are... Well, they do have the mark, you know, the marks which are almost level 3 on Aster, so they do get a lot of bonus agility if they're able to keep their distance. And for range heroes, they could go through this kind of quick. So, uh, Wraith Pact, huh? The totem, uh, what, is, what is it? <laughs> Man, it's not funny if you can't, you can't let me at least. Alright, uh, fine, fine, fine. Well, anyway, it's CDR, he's got the Aegis for four minutes left. They smoke up from TNC. They don't have Asta with them, though. He can TP. I like his item. He's got the Dagger of the Wristful. And with your massive attack speed, the extra 40 damage is huge the, if you can get it. Especially if you can get it before a marksman, uh, sorry, multi shot. Yeah, meanwhile, though, there is going to be the reveal coming through onto Moon. Moon can get himself away from this Chronosphere. Oh. It does actually catch Moon, but it's going to be on Critch Critch now as well. The BKBs come through the mid one. Sharpshooter are going to be tanked up there now as well. They're going to be able to get the counter Mavis to fall over the kill onto Critch. And Critch will go down. They can go even further onto this now as well. And Asta just has to retreat. The arrow will be off the mark. Doesn't hit connect onto anybody. And the zombies Asta takes care of, though. The time walk, though. The diving onto tier threes. The gust comes out, faces void. Doesn't want to use that BKB. There's going to be a really nice fish into the leap, the damage. And Asta will he go down in his own base while it's still tier two oh, standing. God. He's going to go down. And uh, it's SMG just saying this is our base now CDR has that time walk once again box gonna get really down low trying to do what he can with the unleashed damage in that sidekick but he's still gonna be killed off the echo on the back lines and this is gonna be tier four's dog here from the side of SMG at 27 minutes and tier two still stand oh dude like it's just the draft is so strong from SMG and TNC I did not address this at all I mean, they were. They, they, it wasn't even an amazing corner. Again, two man corner with Moon caught into it, hmm. but they can't do anything. Then they just just run over them. They got all the tools they have. They have the heels coming out. They got uh, they got stun. Afu can just stun from my way. He's got an Aether lens as well. 
So just a super solid draft by SMG. Oh, look, and look at that, Krish. They're gonna mile go away. Further. Yeah. He's a mile away. Look, what is this fissure range? What is this? He just cast his fissure for like, oh god, it's it's SMG looking so good at this. Yeah, and 25 to 32 here, 18k net worth. We'd like to say, even with the the early lead, I guess you can call it, in terms of kills that TNC had, they never really had that net worth advantage here. Mm. And it is starting to just, it, not even slowly snowball, it is just falling off the mountain in favor of Team SMG. They're going to be able to lock down Astra again. Astra doesn't have the, the BKB at all. So he wasn't able to deal, even the bashes from the Faceless Void would have dealt with that anyway. So now they just get themselves a second set of racks. There's still a tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. But SMG, they've completely taken over this base. All the base belongs to them. And they're even going to be able to go further. They take down Carlo. And this is going to be, what? Do, do, do you have any way back here as TNC? I don't think you do. Your Scepter, Marcy. Pops up PKB. Oh, oh. Gonna try and do what he can with the Unleash, but he's still just getting buyback. taken down. And that's gonna be the buyback from Asta, but I don't know how okay, much that's this is CDR, he gets that time up forward right onto Aston now as well. He's gonna be pushed away. So they are gonna be able to pop the Aegis. But this is just a full reset for the Faceful Void, who's got a Chronosphere, catches two, and now they can go onto Astra as well. Lockdown onto oh, Bridge. Okay. GG's good, good to call you. Faceful, because he's just, he's all up in the face of TNC. You know, after they got the team wipe top, uh, the team wipe top. I looked at the graph and it actually said zero percent chance for TNC. Gaben's usually not like that. He's usually like, oh no, no, they. I'll give them a one percent, maybe two if they have a big battle pass. But in this game, he was like, nope, no way in hell that the TNC can come back with not with this draft. It was kind of cute to go for this four range draft. It, it's interesting, but overall SMG just looked so like, just nothing they could have done. There's just nothing that TNC could have done against this draft. Better landing stage than I honestly imagined, but that was it. That was all. That was the only thing that came out for TNC for the TNC. SMG just had the game from the beginning. Yeah, and that was. I mean, the damage that they did. You, like say, you look at the graph; it just crashes down and crashes down. Um, mid one was able to get a free lane after trading kills in that bottom lane there as well. So he got that free farm up. What was he in terms of net worth? 18. So he was second highest net worth in the game. And mm. in fact, third was Moon. Nobody on the side of TNC Predator was in the top three. I mean, it's just... I think and Moon also did the most damage in the game, by the way. This, this core Mirana... I mean, we've been, this is the second time we see it, and the, even the first time they lost the game, but it looked okay. I'm, yeah, maybe there's something here with this core Mirana that uh, that we're seeing in this BTS Pro Series. Maybe it's something we're going to be seeing in the last chance qualifier. But for now, SMG, they're on a roll. This is the second win in the in, of the day. Their last game will be against, again will be against TNC. Yeah. TNC, they really this. I think I believe this is the last game of the tournament for them, and. If you can win, you might. I don't think they have no chance of going to upper bracket, but at least they have a chance of getting some experience against uh, against SMG. Yeah, um, but that is going to be it, guys, for the first game. We're going to take a quick ten minute break, and we'll be back with TNC Predator versus SMG. The second game still to come, and we'll find out if SMG are they going to be in a roll to end the day, or TNC Predator are they going to force it to another one one? We'll find out in about ten minutes. We'll see you after the break.